Hey everyone, Sarah Brown Wessling here from the Council of Chief State School Officers National Teacher of the Year program. I'm excited to introduce Voices from the Classroom, the State Teacher of the Year podcast. I was named National Teacher of the Year in 2010, and since then, I've been committed to sharing the stories and elevating the voices of the State Teachers of the Year. It is my hope that this podcast will give you insight into the incredible work they do. In these episodes, the 2020 State Teachers of the Year are navigating responding to two radical changes in our society, the COVID-19 pandemic and the heightened awareness of institutionalized racism. Through this first series, my first lesson of the year, we hope to capture the true essence of the return to school from an educator's perspective. You can join the conversation on social media by using the hashtag hashtag ntoy20 or visiting us online at ntoy.org. That's N-T-O-Y dot O-R-G. This is Carolyn Fennessy, Press Secretary at the Council of Chief State School Officers. Welcome, Katie, and thank you for joining me today. To start, could you please introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Katie Porsche. I'm an elementary art teacher in Danville, Indiana. Small rural town. Uh, I love creating all kinds of art with the kids, and then I create art myself. Um, so could you tell me about one of your first, in, first lessons um, this year, what you did and, and what your students did? So with my second graders, we created pinch pots the very first day of school. Part of that was just because we didn't get to do our pinch pots from last year. We, had, uh, we were working up towards it and getting excited about it. And then March hit and we all had a quarantine. So part of it was just I wanted to give my students that experience. But then the other part was I didn't know how much time my classes would have face to face and whether that was going to be just a couple of weeks, couple of days, we didn't know. So I wanted to front load all of those best medias, those most exciting projects right at the start of school. So I uh, purchased some model magic that was all individually packaged and handed that out and we dug right into it. Mm-hmm. Then after we did the pinch pot the next week, we started talking about color expressionism and I, we tied in some of those social emotional learning components. We looked at an artist named Mark Rothko and talked about how color can give secret messages to our brain and in our brain, our brain learns and tries to figure out emotions and color in the same places and so color is a great way to send secret messages. So my students all chose colors based on the messages their brain needed to be recognizing. That's great. For those of us who maybe barely passed art uh, (laughs) as a student, could you tell us what a pinch pot is? I would love to. So a pinch pot is one of the most basic ways to create a ceramic shape that is in the form of a bowl. So Uh, I give my students a ball of clay and we roll that up uh, with their hands um, flat and kind of just moving in a circle. And then we stick the ball of clay in our palm, stick our thumb up on the other hand, and then stick it down straight inside of the ball, trying trying to make a cave and not a tunnel. So we take crab pinchers and then we pinch around the sides of that bowl ball shape kind of form until we create a form that looks very much like a bowl and that's a pinch pot. Okay and then how did they color the pinch pots? Yeah so typically in a normal school year where we can I can just put out a whole palette of temper paint and we can just have at it and share in the middle of the table. Um, We would just use paint to cover it up Uh, but this year being different I took out some tissue paper and because we're choosing a color based on a message that our brain needed to receive, whether it needed to to brighten our day, have a pick me up or to have a calm down stress relieving moment, kids chose either warm colors or cool colors. Warm colors are those reds, yellows and oranges and they send signals to our brain that help us to wake up or hey look, the sun is shining, it's a cheerful sunny day. Or they impassion us. So um, kids could choose warm colors or cool colors, those blues and greens and purples, which 
signal to our brain, hey, stay focused. You can calm down now. It's okay. So they took either warm color tissue papers or cool color tissue papers, and I placed those at their little spot. And then they were using Mod Podge, a very glossy kind of glue, to adhere the tissue paper on and then add a very glossy surface to it. So it has a very similar look to a, a real glazed bowl that goes into the kiln. Nice. Um, so are the pinch pots like sort of a legendary project in your class? It's, it's one of them, yeah. I think really anything with clay is absolutely legendary. We try to do it as much as possible. Mm -hmm. But clay is so tactile that... You, you can just get in a zone very quickly because it requires your whole focus, all your fingers and your brain. Uh, you can release energy out of it. And so it's something that I knew was going to be, yes, we're back. We're doing this thing. And it's a pinch pot making is a, is a fairly simple and quick project with our second graders. So something that I knew can get done within a week. And hopefully we'd be back the next week to add the color. And we were. So mm -hmm. I'm so grateful. That's great. So was that a project that um, the kids had to miss out on in the spring when schools were closed? Yes, yes. Back in the spring when they were first graders, we were studying about effigy bowls. These bowls that they are bowls, but they look like they have a life form on them. The, the bowl looks like a cat. It looks like a dog. And so we were going to create pinch pots and and turn them into animals. But then everything, everything happened. Mm -hmm. So I knew yeah. that was something that I didn't want them to miss out on that experience. Mm -hmm. Besides sort of the practical considerations of trying to front load the lesson and then the differences you had to do with the materials, was anything different about how you taught that this year than other years? Mm -hmm, absolutely. Uh, in other years, I probably would have had, well, first off, I have uh, five different tables in my room on a traditional year. Now we have seven tables where four kids are sitting at a table each, and there's plexiglass dividers uh, at the tables. And so in previous years, I probably, if I, we were dividing up into different kinds of colors, warms or cools. I would have designated tables out and said, this is, these are the warm color tables, these are the cool color tables. And I would have invited them to go to those tables. But without having movement, uh, with our students being in what we're calling groups or cohorts, where they're with that group the whole day long, we couldn't do that. So it's, I also love to encourage just the learning of responsibility and self-advocacy and getting your own supplies and getting what you need and being responsible for those things. But I'm having to pass out a lot this year. So it looks a lot like me running around the room and passing out all the colors and trying to set up different, I find really some great educational quick YouTube clips that talk about color or talk about form. And so the kids are still acquiring knowledge while I'm passing things out. Um, but in previous years, it would have been much more hands-on and, and getting that responsibility in. Mm -hmm. um, was there reactions to the color theory lesson or how many picked warm versus cool different because of the pandemic? Yeah, there was a lot of kids who went straight for the cool colors. I, I would say I had... 90% of our student population choose, of the second grade, choose cool colors, which are those colors that help calm you, take away the stress and anxiety. And uh, definitely the minority were choosing warm colors to brighten their day because they were already feeling maybe more down or sad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that, I think... I, I think on a, a typical year, I would have it maybe more... 60%, 40% would, would be the reflection of the grade level. Yeah, that's really interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and so through this lesson, um, what have you taken away? What have you learned um, about teaching or, or your students throughout this? 
You know, so often I, when I think of teaching, I think the, of preparing students for what lies ahead in the future, but especially with this lesson, it was more about equipping them for the present uh, and helping them to process the past. Mm -hmm. And it, it is also preparing them for the future. We're, I was teaching different types of ways to do mindful breathing and things, but a lot of it was just so present focused. And I, I almost think just the fact that we were more present focused it really brought a lot of energy to the project itself because we were living this thing. I think in art class, I try to do a lot of incorporating what are, you know, our lives, our interests, uh, teaching them to, to, to observe something out, something that's interesting them and, um, and, and pour that into their work. But that's, that's bringing in the outside effects and, and putting it in. And, but in this lesson, we were taking a concept and, and making it go out into the present versus bringing it inside this project. So mm -hmm. the project was, was actually, in a way, it was speaking to us at the same time. It was doing something for us. Great. Well, thank you so much um, for joining this interview and sharing um, your lesson and teaching a, someone who has not been a second grader for a very long time about pinch bots. Yeah, no problem. It's my joy. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the first series of Voices from the Classroom, the State Teacher of the Year podcast. This podcast is brought to you by the Council of Chief State School Officers National Teacher of the Year program. It's our honor to elevate the voices of educators across the country and provide them with a national platform to amplify their message and advocate on behalf of their students and colleagues. Please share these lessons on social media with the hashtag NTOY20. That's hashtag N-T-O-Y-2-0. Let's keep the conversation going.